As our next speaker is coming up, I will give him a brief introduction. So Zach Gordon is an educator and he has taught WordPress at the high school and college level. He's also taught um, online at Treehouse and um, as well with, with coding schools. I learned a fun fact about him that he loves and grows microgreens. So if you're a health nut and want to learn more about that, you can ask him all about it. And since he's not quite set up yet, I will just say, speaking of succulents, we do, <laughs> there were some succulent arrangements um, by the registration tables that we're actually giving away at the end of the conference. So if anybody Hello, wants to channel the WordPress apocalypse vibe, you're welcome to take one. Um, I, that's all I have. <laughs> so Zach Thank Gordon. You. Thank you. How do y'all? All right, well, I get set up. Um, how many of y'all have used WordPress and Gatsby together in conjunction? Cool. How many of y'all know about WordPress and Gatsby and just use something else instead for your CMS? OK, cool. Wow, a lot of you, do, do you just not use a CMS in Gatsby or new to it? Anyone new hasn't plugged in a CMS into Gatsby yet? Cool, OK. So I've been working in the WordPress space for quite a while, and I'm really excited about um, the content mesh and how it's evolving and how it's pushing WordPress forward, how we're all pushing the web forward and everything that's happening. So this is going to be a, you know when you prepare for an hour talk and then it turns out it's only 15 minutes long? I'm going to try to go pretty quick here and basically just run down everything about um, not just pulling in static stuff from WordPress into Gatsby, but building truly dynamic and rich sites. So my Twitter handle is ZGordon, and you can get these slides and follow along. Um, and I'll just pull these up and get into it. Keep an eye on the clock. Okay, cool. So highly dynamic uh, Gatsby sites with WordPress. Again, my name is Zach. I just started a really cool new role at a static hosting provider. So I've been teaching developers how to build with JavaScript and Gatsby and WordPress for a while. But now I'm working on how do we get um, people who just want to click a button to be able to do it, which, which cloud is trying to do, which themes are trying to do. So this is a really exciting um, time to be involved with this. But my background is in education, um, have also done some work building up themes that work well with Gatsby and WordPress out of the box um, from a more commercial and open source front. So you can check out some of that and follow me on Twitter. Um, more people that I can thank, some of them are literally in the room. A lot of them you have probably learned from online. I won't, they're, they're not even all up on the screen here, but I'm really grateful for the education in this community. It's really taken seriously and the idea that everyone is welcome and if you have questions, we wanna help you and people going out of their way and time um, to answer a lot of that. So if you aren't up here and I have been learning from you, my apologies, but um, just to give a shout out to, to a few of the many. So just to define a term, when we talk about dynamic sites versus static sites, dynamic ones are going to be ones that at least a portion of the content is being loaded after build time. So we're getting back into that using Apollo or using Axios or something like that to pull it in. But you could build these sites in a really clever way so that you're not waiting for all the content to load. You could still static load a big portion of the page and then after somebody authenticates or if you need to live update something, you could pull in that fresher stuff live. So we're not talking a completely static build and we're not talking a completely dynamic build. We're talking about a hybrid situation in the middle. And these are the components that um, I feel there might, if you see any that are missing here, uh, just shout them out. But comments, forms, memberships, e-commerce, LMS because I'm in education, so the learning modules. And then um, Gutenberg blocks, which are kind of outliers, but want to mention here. These are components that once you build a static site, how are you going to upload Hey Alex, how are you going to upload uh, comments back into WordPress, right? So you need this kind of two-way communication happening. And even um, something as simple as comments can get quite complicated. Now Gutenberg, um, WordPress has gone through building a block editor. It's all React-based. And the interesting thing about this is if you have a block that has a dynamic front end, front end in that it is interactive and that it uses React or JavaScript, how do you port that over into the Gatsby world? So what we're going to see evolve over the, couple, over the next couple years are people building WordPress blocks that also have a component library that you could import directly 
directly into your Gatsby sites and parsers that will look for stuff that was static and should be dynamic, but this is a different kind of dynamic. We could solve this with just normal client-side JS, so it's not really involving API calls and dynamic loading in that sense, but I wanna point that out. Now, there are two kind of general approaches here. Code it yourself or SAS it. And I use this SAS term very loosely and I use the coding term very loosely because in a lot of these, again, you're gonna have hybrid solutions where a library is gonna do a lot of the work for you but you still have to write some custom code. And especially those who are coming from a traditional um, or monolithic LMS or CMS environment, building with React, building with the React ecosystem might be new for y'all. How many of you have kind of got your upstart in the web from the React ecosystem? Like that's what you're most comfortable with, it kind of feels native. Other folks coming, anybody coming from into React, from other areas of tech, from other programming frameworks? Yeah, so we're all kind of learning this as we go along and I break these into two categories. Um, but a lot of time there's a lot of overlap. So this slide probably wouldn't su surprise you. The code it solution, the pros are gonna be you get exactly what you want and you can code it to be extendable, but the downside is gonna be your development time and your costs, especially maintenance costs long, long term. You build this really cool calendar plugin and then your dev ghosts and you're a big agency and you need to roll it out to new people or you need to update it, right? That's something you gotta consider. And on the SaaS side, it's great. A lot of this stuff is plug and play. Anyone use a Gatsby plugin and barely had to do any work and now you have like Snipcart running or something crazy, it's pretty nice, right? So it's maintained for you. I personally love this approach. I teach developers, but when I go to build a site, I'm like, what can I get out of the box? As easy uh, as possible. And not even for free because I do believe that we should be paying people to keep our software up and running. Um, but it may not be extendable or might not even exist, right? And then we get into the whole other side of cost. Now I'm paying $50 a month for just having comments on my site. How do you convince a person who is used to going to a WordPress site and getting that out of the box for free that this is worth it, right? So there's a lot of um, understanding of different approaches to this. So what I wanna run through in the next nine minutes are all of these different areas, some SaaS approaches, some code-it-yourself approaches, and if you, if you have ideas that I didn't cover, or if you want to know more about this, um, I'm gonna try to include links, a little snippet of code so that you can kind of see what you're doing, and then please come talk to me. I'm gonna be hanging out, and I would love to get into these conversations of how do we pick the right tool for the job. Because in the WordPress ecosystem, most people are not about the right tool for the job, they're about WordPress for everything, regardless of whether it's the right tool for the job. So as an educator, what I'm always trying to push is like, okay, we love, we love our tools, we have our loyalties, we, we have our skill sets, but we need to be able to expand beyond just thinking from the WordPress bubble into the larger content mesh world. And this is an emotional process as much as it is an educational one or a logical one. So let us begin. Now the first thing with comments, we can keep it negative, we keep it negative, we can native, we can custom code it or we can sassify it. And to keep it native, you're basically coding a custom comment form, which in React, you already lost half the WordPress developers, maybe 60%, maybe 40, depending on how many of them are really learning React. Then you're using Apollo or uh, the WordPress REST API uh, to send stuff back in. You're triggering a rebuild. You probably have your site on Netlify or some version of that. And then maybe you're not even waiting for a full rebuild. You're checking those things instantaneously um, with Apollo. Now there's, WordPress got a REST API, and the kind of joke among developers, by the time we got a REST API, REST API was out of fashion, right, because GraphQL was just rolling out. And shout out to Jason and his team, and shout out to Gatsby for bringing on the WP GraphQL plugin and really supporting it, which I'm excited to see. So like, as a developer, I feel like I'm not coding Gatsby right if I have to interact with the REST API. Anybody else feel that way? Like, I believe that Gatsby, even more than Facebook, made GraphQL a standard and make I don't know, people feel bad for not using it. I know that was no one's intention, but I know when I'm going through stuff, I'm like, oh, if it's still an REST API, it's not, it's not fully what we need. Um, now, I just wanna give some shout outs to folks who have been innovating, because a lot of this is really new, right? So the folks over at Northstack, which is a forward-thinking um, WordPress hosting service, did a really good blog post early on on how to, with the help of Jason too, I believe, on how to get comments working natively. And so you have some, um, GraphQL queries that are pulling in all your comments, and then you have some mutations that are feeding that back, and this blog post with the links and stuff, um, will, I'm just gonna show you little snippets of it to try to get an idea of, of what's going on. But this is pretty standard stuff. Um, 
in the larger ecosystem, but it's a lot for an average WordPress developer. Um, I have a course on Gatsby and WordPress, and I kind of take that code and modify it a little bit more so that you could get nested comments and do some of the things like, if you want to comment here, your form shows up there rather than at the bottom, right? Just making it more of what you expect from a native WordPress experience. Then you get into custom coding it, right? So we move out of like, we're gonna just use WordPress and its tool set only, and maybe we'll save our entries somewhere else, asterisk, like anywhere else. That could take up a lot of other possibilities. But then you get into moderation, you get into spam, you get into notifications and all these other things. And to some folks, this is no problem. Anybody seen this site? And there was a good CSS tricks on this, the Jamstack comment and um, comments engine. And this is a really cool integration where Okay, they weren't using Gatsby, but all of these things in the content mesh world are interchangeable, so we just <laughs> slap a logo on it, change a few lines, and we're up and running with Gatsby, right? So you build a form that saves to a JSON file that kicks off a Lambda function that executes a Slack notification that gives you an option to approve or unapprove, and then that kicks it back to a JSON file, which then does something else. Bobby Buttercakes, I swear I read all this code and looked at it. Then you trigger, oh, you re-trigger the build process on Netlify to start again that rebuilds your Gatsby site, and now you have these comments, right? So this was really cool. I hadn't thought about this approach. For someone who is used to getting an email from WordPress and like, hey, okay, I need to moderate this. If you get a Slack ping or something like that, that's, that's not bad. And in the end, all your stuff is integrated into one system. So. No, so seven systems. But it's all working in a flow that you're kind of used to, and you, there aren't additional costs and things like that. So in this kind of thing, you're, the way they built it was you have one Netlify form that takes submissions, and then that notifies you, and then you hit a Lambda function that will go delete that form entry from one form and submit it to another secret one that nobody has access to, and then that will re-trigger your site and it will send the information over there. So this is really creative. You're using two forms to recreate a, moder a comment moderation system. Only something a developer would think of, right? This is not your average uh, plug and play, plug in user uh, that is doing this. And then the SaaS approach is, Honestly, a lot of research. It's finding the right one, it's signing up, it's paying for it, and it's installing it. And I couldn't mention all of them, like I'm not even mentioning Discuss or Facebook comments for personal reasons and like privacy and owning your own data like is something in the WordPress ecosystem. I know a lot of the open source ecosystems, it's really important. Um, anyone played with this one yet, Comento? Look pretty cool to me, pretty simple. You sign up, you basically embed a little bit of code. This is basically just injecting a JavaScript uh, script and an empty HTML tag somewhere, div ID commento, and boom, you've got comments working on your site. Um, so that little snippet would just go on the, your post page or whatever. So that's comments, um, and this trend is gonna go through all of them. Again, I wanna go kind of quickly. With forms, you got the same options here. That's an extra slide. Um, you could write back to WordPress, so there's the Gravity Forms, which is a popular dynamic form, and this plugin is one of the source Gatsby plugins up there. It's using the REST API, right, so not completely as cool. But it gives you this, which is cool, which is a, what is this called, a component, right, uh, that replaces your entire form, and it basically tries to take what is a Gravity Form on the PHP side and modify it and turn it into a React form on the other side that will speak back to data. We also have um, WP GraphQL. The big, the big space we're now is trying to get all these plugins to work with WP GraphQL. So if you're trying to make a name for yourself, getting involved with working with these comment forms, these contact form companies, you're gonna be able to beat them to it. I can almost guarantee you that if you got hyped about this and left here, you'd have something launched before these big companies that are making money off of it, and you probably have a way to monetize it and you'd be doing everyone a, a big favor. Um, so this one is working a little bit differently. They're not giving you the comments, but you're basically recreating your form, or you're not, they're not giving you the form um, rebuilt. You have to kind of manually recreate it and then send the data back. So we're still not in that plug and play. I got a contact form, I drag and drop it in WordPress and it works. Something that we did at WP Gatsby, Gatsby WP Themes is 
Um, we only have it with contact form seven at the moment, but we're working on other ones, which is it's GraphQL supported. It'll basically parse your form, recreate any form you design in WordPress into a React form, and then ship all your data back to WordPress. So that's like, that's where we're going. That's what we're trying to create. But if you've ever used um, contact form seven, anyone? Yeah, you have to write HTML forms in WordPress in a day and age when everybody's doing drag and drop, like, UI, really cool design form. So that's kind of like not quite acceptable from my opinion. But we're moving through it. Like I said, a lot of room for innovation here, folks. Um, so this is the code that we're looking at, right? We have two different um, plugins, one that's going to parse whatever form it is, and then another plugin for that form specifically that's going to map everything over to a React form. This is making sense to everyone, right? You're following, I know we're all at different levels of development here, but like I said, I'm just trying to give you as much, all the different ways you can make it dynamic. Um, so let's keep on rolling. So you could roll your own. Again, you could build your own custom form. You could store that stuff wherever you want, however you want. You could set up your own validation, maybe, and send out emails, maybe, or you just, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could approach this. Um, so when I was asking folks, I, I don't know Nikolai personally, but they said, oh, we're using this Gravity Forms approach, but now we really like creating Firebase cloud functions. And again, like this is a developer response. So I looked into it a bit and played around, like you could use Formic, Firebase, and then if anything is getting into Zapier, then you could eventually send out emails and recreate this flow. Again, a little developer heavy, but if you're trying to create a SaaS product, if you're trying to productize this, a really cool option. If you're an agency with the React team, totally valid to be doing this. Um, this is what some of that code might look like, right? You have your component that's going to just post to Firebase, and then that's going to trigger something in Zapier because it could just watch your Firebase code for you. You don't have to code anything out. Then you send it off to SendGrid. You send it off to MailChimp. You send it off to wherever you need it to be. Then we could SAS it. Netlify forms, like hands down. How many of y'all have used this? Yeah, this is still, even in the WordPress ecosystem, a very popular one. Right, Jacob? That's right. Um, so this is super easy, right? We just have a form, and you could even parse your WordPress forms that you designed with something else to work with Netlify and ship over there instead of back to WordPress. The one negative side that I saw to this is like I like to be able to test my forms locally, and I've never bothered running set up Netlify dev. Anyone do that? Please come talk to me if you have, and okay, we'll, we'll talk later. Cool. Um, but there's so many of these, and I get really geeked out about like out of the box things that just work. So like. Um, getform.io, there's a ton of these SAFs ones. Memberships is another big one. So WooCommerce memberships is the only one I've actually hacked on a little bit. But you run through the same process, right? You can validate with um, JWT auth. You could get the credentials from the person, go check to see what data is available. And then when you're loading the data, you're going to do this dynamically, right? You don't want to static build protected stuff ever, because even if you put some sort of password protected thing on it, that static page still exists. So you're into like build the whole site static, but the member stuff, you're going to fetch that live with Axios after the person is validated. Um, this is the biggest one for me. If you want to make e-commerce work in the WordPress world, if you want to make WooCommerce work, like come talk to me, because we need a WooCommerce Anywhere or a Anywhere WooCommerce type plugin. And this is Podia. Anyone seen this? This is an LMS out of the box. Love this service. They designed it really well. They give you a little widget. You press buy on any static site anywhere. It pops up. It integrates with PayPal and Stripe and then sends the data back to their server. We could basically, and we've played around with this a little bit, recreating it for WooCommerce. And this is going to make so many people be able to move into the Gatsby world from WordPress and keep their WooCommerce site, but the WooCommerce API does not exist for purchasing anything. So we need to kind of recreate that, but let WooCommerce handle all the automation and everything. I'm kind of at the end of my time. I'm going to, wow, I did it. OK. Obviously, there's a lot more to all of these. Um, oh, it missed a slide on Snipcart and um, Shopify, but like Shopify in the WordPress ecosystem, it feels weird. I just got to tell you to use Shopify and e-commerce. So come help me figure out how to make WooCommerce work. Um, like I said, I could have talked about this for an hour. Um, 
Surprisingly, it, it happened in 15 minutes. I'd love to chat with you more about any of this. I have a lot of opinions. I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of stuff I have no idea about. So if you've played with any of these integrations with any of the CMSs, um, please come chat with me. And would love if you follow me. Uh, Z Gordon got some cool stuff going. And I just got heard from uh, my book publisher that we're going to write a Gatsby Explain book that's going to start soon. We just did a JavaScript and a React one. So um, follow for some of that stuff. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it.